One thing we've excelled at, for example, are patients with advanced heart disease. Heart failure is so severe that they're facing either highly experimental stem cell treatments or heart transplantation. And these are two areas in which we've excelled. We've become the world leader in the number and also the outcomes of heart transplants for those patients who need them. And we've also made uh, quite uh, a lot of progress in the area of regenerative medicine. When the Heart Institute was established 15 years ago, almost all valvular problems in the heart or major structural problems required opening the chest surgically, putting a patient on cardiopulmonary bypass, fixing the problem in an operating room, and then keeping the patient in the hospital for about a week. Um, in that 15 years, the management of valvular heart disease has been completely transformed so that things that used to take that long and were that complicated can now be done as overnight therapy using just a catheter inside the heart and no opening of the chest. We've led the way in the development of these technologies. We've done more such procedures than any other center in the United States. Over the last 15 years, the Heart Institute has seen an incredible increase in volume. Uh, we have gone from doing 25 thoracic transplants a year, meaning either lung or heart or both, to doing over 200 now with um, outstanding outcomes. Uh, we have gone from doing about 3,000 catheter-based procedures a year to 13,000 a year. When the pandemic of COVID-19 started early in uh, 2020, we were among the first to codify the cardiac complications that are associated with the disease, for example, myocarditis and other forms of acute manifestations, and then there's long-running complications that have to do with long COVID. We were among the first to, des to describe these situations. And since then, we've been at the forefront of studying the cardiac complications of uh, COVID-19 in communities. It's mind-boggling to imagine what might happen over the next 15. But for sure, among the trends that we've seen that will continue our miniaturization. We believe that it's very likely that major equipment that is now required, for example, to sustain the heart artificially, luggage size pumps that need to be plugged in periodically to batteries, for example, as an external pump for the heart, these things will be miniaturized and implanted. We're going to see an enormous rise in the maturation and ability of biological therapies gene-based and cell-based therapies to address heart disease in a very fundamental way that actually changes the disease rather than just reacts to it. And of course, we're getting better at prevention and also the understanding of how disease is manifested differently in men and in women, as well as in various socioeconomic groups. 